Hey guys, Garrett with Executive Firearms. I got a quick question I wanted to cover today. I had someone reach out on YouTube and ask me, can you do a video about manipulating a safety? Um, and so that's what we're going to do today. We're going to talk about manipulating safety and how that applies and what we want to do. I'm going to try and keep it really simple. It's not a super complex subject, but there are some thought processes that go into it that I think are important for people to grasp. Um, and they honestly don't get talked about very often. So, let's first start by defining the two types of safeties that I think there are. I think there's manual safeties, which are like what we have on an AR, something we can manually switch on and off. Um, some would call them mechanical safeties, manual safeties, whatever it is. And then I think there's us, the safety that we're able to put. And that would be, you know, not pointing the gun at anything we don't want to shoot, right? Keeping our fingers straight off the trigger, you know, until we've made the conscious decision to fire. Um, those are kind of the safeties that we control. control. Um, and obviously all the gun safety rules help us, but those two being the primary ones of not putting our finger on the trigger until we've made the intentional decision to fire, that's the safety. 99% um, of the reason guns go off is the trigger's pulled. So with that in mind, let's talk about what we should be thinking, the thought process and what it should be for when we're actually practicing our safety where we're not putting our finger on the trigger. And then we'll talk about some of the caveats for manual safeties. Um, so, First thing when we're talking about us actually activating, uh, us being safe, the rule of thumb that I kind of like to use for this is eyes and muzzle linked up. So if I'm down here and my eyes are up here, my muzzle's not really linked up, right? Now there's certain exceptions for this with close retention shooting, things like that, where you know just because my eyes and my muzzle are not directly linked up, if I'm you know looking, if my target's right in front of me and I'm looking at it, then my eyes and muzzle could be considered to be linked up. So there's very little exception there, but what I'm generally talking about is if we have something that's far away, that we're trying to decide if it's a threat, if it's not a threat, whatever the case may be, and we're sitting here. There's not really any reason for my manual safety to be, or my mechanical or my manual safety to be off at that point. The thinking behind that is my time of taking this thing off safe from basically down here to up here, I can't shoot until I have my rifle presented, right? So the reason that it doesn't really slow us down or hurt us to put the safety on and manipulate it or to take it off is because we have all this time from here to here, right? Which one of those things is, is going to take a little bit more time? I can get up and ready to be on. My safety is almost off sooner than when I get sight picture. So time-wise, it doesn't really affect us performance, especially if we get really good at flipping it on and off. The other thing to think about with these is anytime we're just kind of dropping positive control of this and where our muzzle's at and all that stuff, it's probably just a good rule of thumb to have it on safe. A good example of that is if we're doing transitions, boom, boom, and we go to throw a transition, if we don't put it on safe and we throw it to the side here and it's dropping down, let's say something's just chilling our belt, it's very easy for this to go off, right? It, it can happen. So when we're deciding to lose positive control of the rifle and we're saying, okay, I'm not going to link up my eyes and my muzzle anymore, I'm going to a different weapon, I always say you need to put it on safe or attempt to put it on safe. If it does not go on safe, what does that mean internally 99% of the time? What it means internally is your hammer is forward. Thus, there is no way when you can't put that safety on, you get that hard resistance, unless you have some crazy wazoo malfunction, which is like 0.1% of the time maybe, you've attempted to put it on safe, that probably means if it won't go, if it's stuck like this, the hammer's forward and the gun's not going to go off, right? So, anytime you are losing positive control of the gun, right? So if I'm going boom, 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 and I, I'm kind of settling, then I unlink my eyes on my, my muzzle, it should be automatic for me to just flip it on the safe. It's the same thing with if I'm moving from position A, position B, whatever I'm doing, I need to be up on the gun, boom, boom, boom. As soon as I decide to move, I'm breaking the gun down, the gun's already on safe, so I can start to move. Um, one of the realities that we don't like to talk about is if you're in a vehicle, or you're in a close quarters situation, all that stuff, not flagging people is very, very difficult. Um, I'm pretty aware of where my muscles at in that last little airsoft Milsim event we went to. It was a reminder again of in training, how cognizant you really have to be of moving your muzzle around people. Um, and there's a lot of people that aren't even thinking about that because it's airsoft, but it's a good training point. Uh, if you're a gun person and you want to get better at manipulations and safety and all that stuff, Go to an airsoft match like this and try and be cognizant of treat it like it's a real gun and you'll start to see, wow, I need to train safety a lot more or I need to be more aware of this stuff. So that's my two cents on manual safety. Um, anytime your eyes and your muzzle are not linked up, I would generally just say throw it on, on safe. 
There are exceptions to that, being the speed reload, you know, if you're shooting and reloading and your muzzle tips up a little bit and you come back down, okay, you're still probably generally pointing it in a safe direction, it's not the end of the world. I keep mine off safe when I'm doing it. When I'm doing an in shoulder reload, I keep mine off safe the whole time. And that's only because when I'm doing that reload, what's the first thing that needs to happen? This magazine needs to be released and this hand needs to relieve support of the rifle, right? So if I'm now relieving support of the rifle, now it's on all the pressures on this part of the rifle and you want me to come up here and hit safe while I'm doing that, give up grip, I lose a lot of control of the rifle. Now, if I'm putting it under my shoulder, if I'm chicken winging it, the first movement I'm gonna have to do is dropping the magazine and coming underneath my shoulder as this hand sweeps back. There's really no reason I couldn't put it on safe there. Um, but again, lost in the weeds on some of that stuff. I just say it's a good principle. Anytime your eyes and your muzzle are not li linked up, go ahead and throw it on safe manually. Um, but yeah, so that's a quick little thing about how I like to run safeties man manually and mechanically. And then obviously the other thing to consider guys with us being the safeties is just don't have your finger on the trigger until you've made the conscious decision to fire. There's no reason for your finger to be on that trigger. Even if the manual safety's off and you're like on a gun, you think some, something might be about to go down. If you don't know for a fact you want that gun to go off, you probably shouldn't have your finger on that trigger. Does that make sense? Um, so there's all sorts of nuance in there in between. Um, and I would just say a really, really good way to build some of those habits or figure out what works or what's dangerous or not dangerous is go do some force on force training. All right, guys, that's all I got for you. Like I said, I wanted to try and keep it relatively short, but I thought you guys would enjoy that video. It was a good question. Um, we appreciate, as always, the followers, the subscribers on all social media platforms. We're going to try and continue to bring you really, really good content, training, um, and products.